Hey, welcome to another episode. I'm Brian Royce, your host, and today we have a pretty different episode from the ones that we have recorded in the past. I'm going to interview Max Keefe. He's a vice president at Xperify, a tool to help brands connect undecided buyers with existing product owners to get honest opinions and experience products remotely at scale. Before talking to him, let me tell you that this episode is brought to you by BSR Digital. I mean, as we all know by now, customer acquisition costs are going up. There's lack of tracking and attribution is probably driving you nuts. The audience sizes are getting smaller after the iOS 14 update. And if that wasn't enough, there are other factors such as the recession and supply chain issues making it harder than ever to grow your e-commerce brand. That's why we need to understand that it's really important to level up the marketing and design a solid strategy as what used to work doesn't anymore. Here at BSR Digital, we have been helping countless e-commerce brands that wanted to scale their business to the next level through paid ads and email marketing for over a decade. To learn more, you can visit us at bsrdigital.com. And you can also email us at hello at bsrdigital.com. Now, as promised, I have Max here with me. Hey, man, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Brian. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So why don't you start by telling the audience more about you, your background, and your story? Yeah, so my background started actually in retail liquidation back in 2017. Um, and for those unfamiliar, retail liquidation is the actual closing of brick-and-mortar retail stores, such as Toys R Us, Sports Authority, and the likes. Um, so my initial career was started seeing brick and mortar retail kind of wind down and, and the evolution of e-commerce really picking up. I then started a business called CareerFlex, which helped employees of those retail stores uh, actually find jobs after they closed. And that was kind of the introduction to, to, to startups and to technology um, and enabling technology to help. From that, I went to a company called Air Garage that uh, took from seed round to a series A and then found Xperify, uh, or Xperify found me. And we've been tackling e-commerce and social proof as well as connecting people. And, and it's kind of a, a full circle story from the brick and mortar side to now e-commerce and helping drive that. Indeed, I was going to say something like that, but you said it better, so thank you. Uh, it was like the first experience, it, was, it wasn't a, a happy experience for your clients, right? I mean, they were close to the business, you were helping liquidate their, their you know, I guess their inventory. inventory. And then, yeah. And then you help them find jobs. How mm -hmm. nice is that? I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was it was a very it seemed like an obvious need because at the time the retailers were liquidating the inventory, the fixtures, the real estate, the IP, but there was this massive transaction of people that were losing their jobs all within a few weeks. And at the same time, there were gig economy companies back in 2017 that had this massive chicken and egg problem where they couldn't enter a market without having the labor ready to go and they couldn't have the jobs ready unless, uh, you know, there was vice versa. So uh, my brother and I came up with the idea that, hey, there's this massive pool of people that are, need work. And there's also these retailers that are looking for qualified employees as long with these gig economy companies that are trying to solve this chicken and the egg problem. There's really not a solution. And that was our first introduction to solving problems and using technology to enable um, better business outcomes for everybody. Yeah, and you guys don't stop solving problems because I remember when I first met you, I was like, oh, this is awesome because there's there are many things that have changed in the last few years, right? Everything moved so fast, but there and, and there are some of them that are pretty important for, let's say, uh, for e-commerce brands, such as reviews. But mm -hmm. what haven't, uh, I mean, what is it about reviews that haven't changed? Why do you think they haven't changed uh, and they, they are the same? Yeah, it's a good question. It's it's a question that I, I, don't, I don't even know the answer to myself. Um, but when I, when Xperify kind of came to me about a year ago, um, it was something that became very obvious. And I think that when you are starting to look at a industry objectively, whether that's retail liquidation or e-commerce, um, you kind of have, can see things from a fresh perspective. And immediately, like in the past, there was a kind of a revelation that, hey, there's a huge opportunity here. 
and at that 10 years ago is to, to help the employees. Now it's, hey, reviews haven't really changed and social proof on e-commerce sites hasn't really changed since the dawn of Amazon 20 years ago. It's still copy with some photos sometimes, if you're lucky. Um, and just a quick snippet about what people experience with the product, but there's not a lot of context to them. Um, and they're really based on quantity and not quality. So when Xperify started to really kind of dive into this problem of social proof, we recognized very quickly that this is a massive need and people are going to other places to find their social proof and find confidence in, in their purchasing decisions. Yeah. And they are so easy to, to I mean, to, to fake, let's say, reviews. I mean, and it's crazy how we as, you know, consumers, because we we all do that, we trust what we read and, and that's it, but we don't go further unless we go, as you said, look for more information elsewhere, right? So what do you guys do at Xperify? Because I know you changed this for good. So what are you guys doing different than, than yeah, what are you guys doing different? That's the question probably. <laughs> yeah, so, so what we do differently is we connect people that are interested in products with people that actually own the products for direct to consumer e-commerce brands. So Brian, you want to go and buy a bike online. T traditionally, you're searching through reviews, trying to find a review that kind of fits your need. Maybe you're trying to find a little bit of context in a review about how tall that person is to fit it to your height and where they might ride, what's the conditions like, if it's a city or if it's a country landscape. But what we do, when you go to the brand's website, now you can actually see a map of everybody in the country, the world that has the bike you're interested in. You could read about their profile, why they bought it, and also connect with them. So you can start talking to them, start a dialogue, start a conversation, or meet them in person to actually test ride that product and actually experience direct against consumer products remotely at scale. So for lots of brands, they don't have brick and mortar stores and, and, and to keep going back to the example in the beginning brick and mortars is dwindling down and, and there's a, a new e-commerce company starting up every other day um there's just not enough real estate and it's too expensive to have physical inventory all over the place so for a lot of our customers experify is the tool that can actually connect them to their potential customers and actually get and, and have their their inventory available for, for people to touch and feel and, and actually make a purchasing decision. That's awesome. So just to clarify for everyone listening or watching, it's, this is like, let's say, if I may, reviews on steroids or reviews 2.0. I don't know if you call that internally or something else, but I think it's taken reviews further because it's not read-only anymore. You can actually take action and reach out to those who bought and do whatever you want. As you said, you can engage with them through, I guess, you can have a conversation, you can chat, or you can even meet them to do like a sort of a test ride, let's say, depending on the product, of course, right? And that's yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, so it's, it's still conceptual in the fact that people are reading through the, the context of why people bought it. They're looking at the photos that everybody has uploaded. Um, they're reading about how this person interacts with the product, why they love it. But it goes so much further because you can actually dive in and, and start asking that person questions about the product and why they bought it, what they like about it. Um, and if they're near you, when they're available uh, to actually show you the product. So you don't have to go to a Reddit board or a private Facebook group, which we see time and time again. I mean, any brand that has significant traffic is you can just type in that brand's name and Reddit and, and find conversations and threads about people trying to create the social proof. And they're asking a community, they're looking for confidence um, to actually purchase. And the problem is, of course, that in those forums, you don't have your, your fans really writing back. It could be someone who had a negative experience. It could be um, someone who bought it off a third-party marketplace and they're not really uh, investing the company in a, a passionate way. So 
it's really great that we can move those conversations off of those pl platforms and put them where the purchases happen and have the biggest fans of the company that actually really know the products uh, answer those questions and, and drive traffic. That's awesome. Any conversions. So most, most do you think this is, I mean, I think this is great already, but do you think this is best suited for certain brands or certain price points or certain industries? Yeah, it certainly lends itself to products that where there's a higher consideration price point. Um, certainly commodities wouldn't make sense. Things that you purchase without really doing any due diligence or vetting whatsoever. But we have brands that have products that are just $200 all the way up to $20,000. Um, and what we see is that it's it's the the lower the cost as long if it's in like a niche product um or there's a lot of competition it still makes sense because people still are doing their due diligence and it's really now we're seeing a replacement for traditional reviews where two and a half years ago when we started it was a supplement to reviews people said well i need my my five star reviews as my uh, quantity but experify provides the quality um, now we're seeing is, is brands are saying, well, if I have three, three star reviews, no one's going to buy this product anymore. And it could have just been, um, you know, problems with shipping and handling or whatever else. Uh, and we're, they're really starting to kind of go away from the traditional star system and recognize that the context is really what's most important. Yeah. Plus, correct me if I'm wrong. When you, I mean the the traditional reviews are a snapshot at the time that that person wrote the review and that mm -hmm. might have happened let's say right after they received the product and everything was okay but then things start happening you know they they break or they really love the products and they last for forever right mm -hmm. and they don't get to write anything else or they typically don't right and here you get uh, the current is like more of a movie or the current snapshot of yeah. the, if they if they if the product uh, is lasting a lot or is good and they are enjoying the product versus if they are not right if the product was great but then after two weeks it broke right yeah and what you see I mean one forty percent of all reviews are faked anyways but the ones that aren't faked a lot of them are written out of emotion they're usually if you're a happy customer. Maybe you'll you'll write a review, but oftentimes it's it's unhappy customers that are trying to make a point, um, and and that's a problem because that's that bad experience or maybe that one off situation where something happened to the product um, that now that just lives statically on the brand's product page. Whereas with Experify, every single interaction is is one on one, and it's they're all new. Um, so you're asking that person in real time, how, how they're enjoying their product or what they think about it over the, the course that they've had it. Um, and it's not just a, a snapshot of that one point. Maybe something could have bad happened and, and now they're staying on the product and the brand. Okay. And do you have, just if you do have, right, do you have any, any stats or any info on how this has helped other brands increase their uh, revenue or anything? I mean, how they... Yeah, how it helped them increase. It could be revenue or it could be more users, more customers, it could be more authority, et cetera. Yeah, what we see across our portfolio is that the customers, the website, on site of website traffic that interacts with Xperify is three times more likely to convert than traffic that does not. And really what we attribute that number to is the fact that the confidence that Xperify provides Sometimes customers, and, and, and oftentimes, depending on the brand, the website traffic doesn't even need to initiate a conversation with the brand's community, but just the fact that they can instill so much confidence in them because it's really vulnerable for the brand. They're saying, hey, don't, don't take our word for it. Here's, here's the option to talk to our existing customers, and, and it's very vulnerable for them. Um, and the brands that, that really have great products and believe in their products, this is conveyed through that availability of Xperify. Um, so we see that conversion lift uh, as being you know, tremendous because 
for the brands that have the higher cost products, I mean, you're looking at at big lifts in revenue. Um, and sometimes people don't even have to, like their existing community doesn't even have to do the work of, of communicating. It's just, it's just having the option that they can, which is really that's, interesting to us. Yeah, that's interesting indeed. You know, I know you met Matt Stafford at uh, Build Grow Scale. Uh, by the way, a shout out for, for Matt. He's great. And he owns uh, or uh, he has built a beautiful community of, uh, you know, conversion rate optimization, or as they say, revenue optimization. And one of the things they say as a principle is that when you have at the top bar of the website your phone number, you won't get many more calls for doing that. It's just that you are, it shows uh, your your um, visit, visitors that you are available for them in case they need you. So mm -hmm. this makes a lot of sense and is in line with what he was saying uh, always, which is they don't need to get in touch with you. Only the fact that you uh, put that option available for them, it's enough for them to say, oh, they have enough trust in what they do that they say, hey, don't trust us. You just get in touch with anyone you want and they have the option, right? So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a great point that, uh, and yeah, Matt, if you're watching this, it's good to see you. Um, but it's it's really true. Just having that type of, uh, that social proof, it builds confidence. And it also allows the unsighted consumers who were, who were, maybe were looking for that extra bit of confidence that this is the right decision, um, having that context and, and having that type of confidence just pushes them over. And we see it time and time again. Um, there's also some brands that uh, are, are absolute super users. And, and one of them in particular is uh, Bunch Bike. Bunch Bike was a brand that was on Shark Tank. Uh, Aaron Powell is their, their owner and an amazing uh, businessman and an awesome guy. And Aaron actually, he has a, his product is, is a cargo bike. Um, and if you look them up on, on bunchbike.com, you can see how how they look, but they're they're not small. They're they're quite large, which means that the traditional retail store is not going to be a good place for Aaron to sell because he's going to take up too much uh too much space in the store. And it's also kind of a unique product where we doesn't really want to rely on one, uh, you know, another uh store employee to sell his product. Um, and it's a, it's a product that's really a, about family and selling to families that are looking for tra micro transportation to get their kids around, uh, pick up groceries, etc. And the way that Aaron uses the product is not so much about having people read context, but really about connection. Um, and what he sees is that he was actually trying to build kind of a, a pseudo version of Xperify himself, where but it, it was obviously a <laughs> It's our entire company, so it's a lot, way too much work for him to do while running his own business. Um, but he reached out to us when he saw us on another brand's website, and it, it really solved his biggest problem because he would have customers reach out to him almost every day, asking, "Hey, where can I, where can I see this thing in person? Because I can't tell if it turns. I don't know what the brakes are like. I don't know if my kids will will be comfortable." Um, and he quickly realized that his customers loved his product. So they were happy to help him once as a favor, but the second time the phone rang, it's a much different conversation and how you really, it's, you know, it's, um, it's, it's different. So implementing Spirify for him was huge because now he gets to connect his customers all across the country and they provide test rides and parks and, and parking lots and around neighborhoods and schools. Um, and it's, it's really his way of, of getting people to, to try the product before they buy it. And the conversion lift has been incredible. So um, shout out to Aaron, if you're watching this, uh, good to work with you and, and, and you have that use case. That's awesome. So before we go, could you please, because I think this is interesting and I, there are many, I mean, way more use case scenarios than just, you know, the being a review 2.0 clearly, right? So could you please do a quick recap on the top use case scenarios or the top benefits of using Xperify for these kind of e-commerce brands? Yeah, so the first obvious use is, is social proof and increasing confidence. Um, we work with tons of different types of brands, everything from Brava smart ovens to uh, micro-mobility products to uh, Vitruvian, home fitness equipment and everything in between. And the 
the social proof is is definitely the number one uh, contributing factor. And that's what brands are really looking for because I said earlier, they don't have, um, if you don't have a thousand locations for people to go into and you don't have that, the overhead for that, um, you still want people to, to have confidence in buying and they're going to be doing their homework somewhere. Um, it's a lot better for them to do their, their homework where the purchases can happen with people that love your product the most. Um, so that's number one. The second one is, is actually interactions and getting people to, to physically try the product. Uh, so, so often there's conferences and brands that are, are trying to give demos and doing pop-ups all for the, the point of knowing that when people try their product, they're so much more likely to buy it. Um, but you can only do that a few times a year. It's very expensive um, and it's, it's, it's nearly impossible to scale. So for brands that are that find value in, in, in providing demos and, and con going to conferences, um, we're an obvious fit for that to actually get people to experience the product and have that light bulb go off sooner and at scale. Um, and then the, the third part is community engagement. And, and I, this might actually be one of the biggest ones, but really what we haven't talked about is the fact that um, lifetime customer value is traditionally ended at the checkout um, when somebody actually, you know, clicks to buy and Experify provides a solution to actually have your existing customers continuously provide value again and again and again um, so that they can actually bring in and convert new leads um, for your business. So activating your customers and, and activating your fans that are, that are out there that are already telling their neighbors and they're already uh, telling their friends and maybe they're on Reddit boards, but they're not the type of consumer that would sign up to be an affiliate because they don't need to, to use their time to go out and make 50 bucks. Um, but they're already telling their friends and family that, that they love their bike or they love their product. Um, community activation is a, a massive part of our business. Love that one. Yeah, you're right. I mean, if you think about it that way, people, I mean, the, the brand and the relationship, so to speak, to say that, I mean, in, in one way, with with their customers, once they buy, it be one time or multiple times, right? But this, would you would you say that would you say that they are ambassadors or or not necessarily? They are just people that they love the brand so much they're willing to give on site uh, feedback on their experience with the products. Yeah, I call them fans because. I don't try to confuse it with ambassador programs or with affiliates because these aren't people that are that are selling products and linking products to try to make a quick dollar. These are people that just genuinely really like the brand and the product. I kind of I call it the monster energy effect, meaning you, you'll see people with monster hats and tattoos and, and stickers on their trucks um, for just because they love the brand and they want to be a part of it. And this effect is not limited to massive corporations like Monster, but but also to smaller brands that have great products. Um, and those fans are out there. The problem is they're just not they're not activated. And when they get the opportunity to, they they love to, to share their experience because they're already doing it. And now they get to be showcased on the website and and actually help participate in something that they really enjoy. That's very cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this was pretty interesting. Thank you for being here and for body you added to the audience. I think this was, honestly, it's the first time we talk about this stuff, you know, improving your reviews because we always talk about social proof and uh, all the improvements that brands need to make nowadays. But then this one is super different. So I really appreciate that. But before we go, uh, I wanted to ask you something I always ask everyone that comes on the show. And it's if you have... If you do have, of course, any book that you love that you want to recommend to the audience. Yeah, I read a book, um, I think about two years ago, that really kind of stuck out. And it was um, How to Swim with the Sharks Without Getting Eaten Alive. And it's kind of a, a classic, um, but it's by Harvey Mackey. And it's an old school sales guy that um, based out of Minneapolis. And a lot of the principles are, I guess you slightly call them outdated but it, the but the but the overall ethos of it is is so wonderful because it talks really about 
providing first class service and being going above and beyond uh, in terms of knowing your customer and also knowing your competition. And I think it's just a, a great book and uh, it's also a fun, easy read. So um, I like that old school mentality. It's cool. And about, um, I mean, being, uh, I mean, adding value to um, to customers, a few I read, I think they were in the list of uh, last year, but I think uh, they are uh, one is super fans by the Pat Flynn, customers for life. Uh, mm -hmm. It's another one. Uh, and there are many more about, you know, keeping your customers uh, happy and then close and engaging with them and building a community. And I think mm -hmm. that these ones are relevant for, for today's topic. So I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, see this one in the, in last year's book list. So I will check, but I think this is a new one. So I, I appreciate you sharing this with me and the audience. Um yeah, I already took notes, so I put this in the in the show notes. So I wanted to thank you again for being here, and uh, please tell the audience where they can go to learn more about you at Expertify. Yeah, head to Expertify.io um, to check us out. For people that are interested in buying a product, you can go and see all the brands that we work with. Uh, if you have a brand, check out our business page, and you can get in contact with us. There's a million ways to do it. You can schedule a call um, right there from our business page. Otherwise, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, just Max Keefe, Experify. Awesome. Max, thanks again for being here. Thanks, Brian. I really appreciate it.